world is telling us as men to be common, to fall in line, to fall short of any visions or plans God has for us. But what about being uncommon? This is a movement of men seeking to build an eternal legacy, a journey of men on mission to rise above the common, to experience sustainable life change. This is Uncommon Disciple. Welcome to the Uncommon Disciple podcast. My name is Michael Bowen. And with me, as always, is Jared Gibson, and we have a very, very special guest with us back this afternoon, Mr. Dave Dudley. Hey, guys. How you doing? Hey, Dave. Great to have you. Yeah, so if you haven't listened um, to uh, episode five of Uncommon Disciple, where uh, Dave was a a guest with us back then, um, go back and listen to that episode, and uh, maybe we'll give you some backdrop to to Dave's background and, and where he comes from and how important he's been in my life. And so, uh, Amen. welcome, Dave. Yeah, welcome. It's good to be here. It's good to be here again. Yeah, yeah it's awesome. Yeah, I listen to the podcast a lot. I go back and listen to two, three, four of them in a row, and it's just so many good nuggets that come out of those things. It just blows my mind. I think uh, I think Dave Jared is one of the biggest advocates for the podcast. Yeah, <laughs> it's either the book or the podcast he's yeah. telling guys about, and yeah. You know, he brought a brought a, a guy with him up from Colorado Springs to the Bible study this morning here at the academy, and um, and so he's just on fire, man. That's awesome. <laughs> I look at him, go. That's exactly what I want to be doing when I'm his age. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I gave Zach a book, and yeah, he's excited to read it and introduce him to Michael and uh, the academy, and yeah, it's what it's all about. You know, keep get make connections to men. So. So, guys, if you're not watching on the YouTube channel right now, um, Dave's wearing a shirt that says, heaven is my home. I'm just here recruiting. And I just love that shirt. You know, that's uh, that's a good way to open a conversation up with people uh, as you're out and about. So what um, what brought you back to Colorado, Dave? Um, We were actually down in Colorado Springs for um, five days. Uh, We had a um, old fashioned tent revival. Um, Mario Murillo. Uh, ministries was there at Radiant Church for five days, Sunday, mo- well, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday nights. And there was um, four to 5,000 people there every night. Wow. Um, a ton of first time converts every night. And uh, just, and then uh, he would do a healing night. He did a, a miracles night and uh, just a lot of, a lot of ministry. I mean, it was amazed. In fact, you know, in my case, uh, back in August, I went to Grove to uh, Sacramento, California, to one of Mario's tent revivals uh, with one of my pastors and a good friend and um, got a supernatural healing. A lung that hadn't worked in about 20 years was healed and brought back to life and just uh, some interesting things. So, yeah. You know, so I, I knew nothing about this guy, Mario, <laughs> and, and I purposely didn't do any research on him because Dave invited us, uh, Song and I, down on a Wednesday night of this week. And so we drove down to Colorado Springs and, you know, just reading about the old time revivals back in the, you know, the 60s, you know, during the Jesus hippie movements mm-hmm. and even how Calvary Chapel started, you know, with the, the tent right. revivals. And, and I'll tell you, man, it was something to be seen <laughs> and to be a part of. It was just it was it was just a really really sweet time of a uh, fellowship and worship and um you know one thing that really stuck out to me was um was Mario's teaching and I wasn't expecting him to teach what he taught I think <laughs> only because of you know the church that they were representing and kind of I know a little bit of background about that church and um and I just I I wanted to listen without judgment right um I didn't want to you know just kind of prejudge and that's why I didn't listen before going down. And one thing that he spoke about was the fact that, uh, that a lot of churches now are giving this watered down gospel to everyone. And so when they hear the real thing, um, they, they can't accept it, right? Because it's too difficult to talk about mm-hmm. repentance, turning away from sin. And, um, and it reminds me of what Paul wrote to Timothy um, in second Timothy chapter four, he says, I charge you therefore before God, And the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead, his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, 
but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers who will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things, <laughs> endure afflictions, <clears throat> do the work of evangelist and fulfill your ministry. Amen. And Dave, what does that speak to you when you hear, you know, Paul writing to young Timothy um, and, and, and exhorting him to preach the word and mm-hmm. to be careful and to be watchful in all things? What does that, what does that speak to you? Well, it's, I mean, it's, there's so much out there today that's um, so far off base. And uh, that, that's one thing I, I love and I enjoy about Mario and the different places we've been with him. When you're done, you know exactly where he stands in every piece of every part of his life. Mm-hmm. You know, there's no, you don't have to question, oh, I wonder what Mario thinks about this. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's what I, and Michael knows, you, most people don't have to question what I believe and what I think and what my, you know, what my beliefs of the word is. And um, it's, I might, I, I don't say a lot, but when I say it, it's exactly what I believe. Mm. And, uh, you know, it's, it's hard for young people because I deal with a lot of young people, a lot of young men, young couples, and, uh, you know, just to try and speak the truth to them straight out of scripture, it's hard, you know, because they've just, they've seen so much, they've heard so much, or they've heard nothing. Mm. And, uh, you know, when you do come up with the truth, you know, in, in the simplest of things, you know, I mean, just the simplest parts of life, like, mm. you know, you're a boyfriend and a girlfriend and you don't live together. It's just that simple, mm. you know? And it's like, it's like so foreign to them, yeah. you know? And so, but, and when you do try and, you know, find something, when we find something good and what we really believe in and, like Mario, I mean, I don't know how many people we invited to this uh, thing. And actually, we ended up, um, we had friends there from Texas. We had friends there from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We had friends from Minnesota. Mm-hmm. You know, Michael and Song came up, you know. And so um, it's just when there's something true, there's somebody speaking the truth and, and really doing what God wants him to do. Um, it's easy to invite people. And, and they show up, you know, so. Yeah. What do you find Dave? Um, and I, people always ask, why does Mr. Dave, you know, travel around the United States to these different things? And, um, and I'm, and it's, it's a good question, right? Because I think some people travel around looking and waiting for some experience. And David told me, Jared, that, um, he wants to be where the Holy spirit is operating. He's, He likes seeing a work of the Lord happening and this newness of life and the people getting saved. And, uh, and that, which that keeps encouraging him in his walk Mm -hmm. and, uh, gives him the strength to go out there and keep preaching the gospel and sharing the faith with other men. Right. But Dave, what, what are some of the holdups that, that you're finding that, you know, we, we had some good discussions in the last episode that talked about, um, you raising your family in northern Minnesota, building log cabins and <laughs> making rabbit fur, <laughs> you know, <laughs> toilet <laughs> seats. You know, I don't know if we can top that podcast, <laughs> oh. but, you know, you know, we can continue down the path for for where God has you at now. Yeah. Um, and, and what you're seeing with men is you're trying to um, disciple them and, and um, encourage them in their faith. And you tell me, you know, there's guys there that just they don't get it. Yeah. Right. Over and over again, they return <laughs> back to the vomit and they mm-hmm. keep, you know, um, and, and there is there's an aspect of grace that we don't want to not mention, but also the fact that, you know, guys, um, it, it's hard for them to turn away from whatever behavior oh, yeah. or sin that they're engaged in, mm-hmm. you know. Right. And it's, you know, and we've Michelle and I have all, always been like that. We've always been seeking something. I mean, if if we can find one piece and if we got to travel across the country, but we get one sentence or one word or one thought that we can implement into our lives and, and, and have in our quiver so that when we run into something like Michael Bowen and you can just pull it out and, you know, one little shot. And it's like, 
I don't know where that came from, but I needed it from someplace. I got it from someplace. I, I, I've never had an original thought in my life. You know? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, I'm just looking for other people for information, you know, just like reading the scriptures. You know, I just want it all in there. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not real good at memorizing, but I know where I can find it and I know the concept behind it. And so I can relay that to people. But, uh, yeah, and it's, um, it, we just said this the other day, um, we're driving around, I think when we were driving down to Colorado Springs, you know, and it's like, how come more people aren't coming with us? You know, mm -hmm. and Michelle says, it don't matter. We got each other and we'll do whatever we got to do to do what God wants us to do. And other people have to deal with it themselves, mm -hmm. you know. And so, because we invite people constantly to be things, you know, and uh, we're uh, we're looking at, you know, where we are right now, dealing with some things at home with the homeschool system in Minnesota. We're we're putting some things together, and we're we're looking at a deliverance ministry um, for the fact that people need more, and uh, there's a Peace missing um, out of Christ's uh, ministry, I believe, and I've had this feeling for 40 years since I got saved that, um, you know, Jesus was always not just, you know, preaching the good God, the good news and stuff, but he was healing the sick, but he was always casting out demons all the time. Mm -hmm. And that piece of it, and because of my background, you know, being a, you know, um, alcoholic, a drug addict, uh, you know, I mean, just like I tell people, long haired, creepy freak but that happened to marry the snow queen. You know, I, I mean, I've been through a lot of crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. And there was always pieces in my life that like, why can't I just get done with this? Why, why does this after I got saved? You know, it didn't matter before I got saved. Mm -hmm. I, well, the crazier it was, the better I liked it. But then once I got saved, once I accepted the Lord as my, uh, Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I wanted to know why. You know, why didn't it just, you know, poof, okay, you're good. It didn't. It got worse for a while. It got way mm. worse. And so now we're, uh, we've, you know, 70 years old, you know, and I've got two huge passions right now that are just pushing us to the limits of, in fact, I'm going home and. I thought I was going to be go home and, and be there for a while while I'm going home and on tomorrow back to Minnesota. And then Thursday I leave for South Carolina. Yeah. You know, just out mm -hmm. of the blue. Was well, that not out of blue? I believe that, you know, that God had opened the door oh, for sure. that. But you did, you talk about this missing piece, Dave, and you, you mentioned this on the last podcast where when you got saved, um, there was someone there that was able to walk you through the next steps. Mm -hmm. What just happened to you? Right. Right. And there there is that missing element in some churches. Well, one, um, they may not even present the good news. Right. The gospel. Exactly. Um, second, they might not even offer up a chance for people to repent mm -hmm. and give their hearts to Christ. Right. Right. Um, or, or three, they do and they don't have a next step. Right. Process. Right. Meaning uh, someone gets saved and then they go home and go, what the heck just happened? <laughs> what do I do now? Yeah. And um, and there's no one there to walk them through what that might look like. Exactly. Right. So they 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 may have given their heart to Christ. They're absolutely saved. Um, there's been a salvation moment, mm -hmm. um, but they're still battling with all of these things from their past and they don't know what to do with it. Right. Right. And exactly. these are the things that you're talking about. Exactly. You know, it's it's like um, um, everybody comes into salvation with baggage. And, and I don't believe it disappears just because right. you say a prayer, walk the aisle, you know, and somebody prays for you. It just, it just doesn't. Um, I'm sorry. Um, you know, and it's, uh, there's that peace in so much of Jesus's ministry um, that I've come to realize uh, actually a third of his ministry is about dealing with spirits, you know, casting out spirits, casting out demons, um, not only you know, out in the in the desert or the ministry that, you know, everybody knows the story about the pigs, you know, legion and the pigs, you know, 
you if you uh, realize what happened there, um, you know, Legion says, you know, we don't want to die. You know, we want to, he says, cast us into those pigs. Well, that pig herd was over 2,000 pigs. So that one man was carting around 2,000 demons mm. that went into the pigs and all went over the cliff. You notice it didn't say, yeah, 20 pigs went over the cliff with demons in them and the other one stayed behind. All 2,000 of them went over the cliff. You know, and when, as I'm reading this and studying this, it's like, that's crazy. You know, I mean, you wonder why men, um, and I deal a lot with men with addictions, men coming out of prison, um, you know, marriage things, men addicted to pornography. And it's like you get them on the track, you get them saved, you get them going. And then, you know, they go to maybe a treatment center and they get out and they're like, hey, man, I'm on fire for the Lord. And like two weeks later, they're back in the treatment center. And I'm going like, what the heck is with this deal? And it mm -hmm. happened to me, you know, in different cases and uh, with different um, sin in my life. And, and every church teaches us all about that the war isn't against flesh and blood. It's against principalities and, mm -hmm. you know, and the spirit world. But they don't tell you what that spirit world is, and they don't definitely don't tell you how to fix it. They, they yeah. a lot of them skirt around it. Like we're just oh, yeah. like they just yeah. avoid it all together, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, it says, you know, he sends out his disciples to cast out demons, you know, and heal the people. But they they for some reason it's like that first piece is oblivious to what they teach. It it just never even comes up. It's just oh, they're we're gonna go heal the sick. And everybody's focused on we're going to heal the sick. Well, we've come to find out that until you fix some things in people's lives, they'll never get healed because there's just too many blocks in the way for them to receive the healing. Which you, you consider know? those like like spiritual strongholds? Oh, or, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. You know, generational. It's all in the scripture. It's not like it's something I came up with. It's like generational curses, strongholds. You know, demons, you know, spirits, unclean spirits, it's all there. And Jesus would always take care of that first. You know, even when he was, was in going in, he went in the synagogue and he's teaching in the synagogue and they're amazed. And all of a sudden, some guy in the synagogue stands up and he's got this spirit, you know. Well, what happens in most normal churches, or not normal churches, but churches today, they, usher that guy out to the back and try and either they throw him out because he's crazy or they try and deal with it and they have no idea how to deal with it. Mm. And it's just like, where, what did Jesus do? He quit teaching. He shut down the service and says, I'm going to deal with this. So he casts the demon out of the synagogue and sets the man back in his seat so he can learn, you know, and that's how it should be, you know. And so um, deal with all the stuff, you know. Yeah, so there's there's this whole process, and and guys, if you're listening, you know it it sounds like a lot, and I think people get a little nervous when they hear about <laughs> you know they they hear things like healing and casting out of demons, and and it is it's true that Jesus spent a good part of his ministry, um, and even you know the apostles continued on. Uh, oh yeah, you know Peter and John certainly um, had that type of ministry in the early book of Acts um, or the early part of Acts. And, you know, there's, there's this whole process. I mean, I believe that Jesus can heal right on the spot. Right. And I yeah. believe that guys can be healed instantaneously. I do too. No problem. Um, but there's also <clears throat> this process of sanctification, right? Mm -hmm. This working out of our old flesh, the right. things that God is working out on us as we continue to take steps of faith, mm -hmm. right? That yes, we're still going to stumble. We're still going to fall. But yes, I also believe that we're in a threefold battle with um, our flesh the world and a demonic presence that's trying to trying to attack yeah. at all times. Yeah. Right. So if we're not, if we're not familiar <clears throat> with the enemy, then we're going to be prone to the attacks of the enemy. Yes. Right. Yeah. And there's going to be strongholds that are uh, in place. And we're going to keep running back to the things that comfort us versus running to the Lord, who is the great comforter. Mm -hmm. And right. um, exactly. And so that's uh, you know, that's an interesting aspect, Dave. And, and, and I know that this is, this, uh, I don't want to even call it the last part of your walk because I think you have a lot left in you. Um, I, I, I told Song, I said, I hope 
I hope the Lord comes back before Mr. Dave goes to be with him because I love having him <laughs> oh, here. Yeah. There's so much to do, yeah. so much to do. And, you know, it's just, uh, and the opportunities that are available, but, you know, but there again, it's like, you know, how many people I know, and since I've really been studying and tied into some people that really understand this part of deliverance and the spiritual warfare, um, how many other people are out there, you know, quietly checking this out? Like, what's the problem? What is what? What's the problem? And and they know what it is, but to bring it out and to face it and and to bring it to the forefront, it's just like. It's, you know, again, it's that secret that the secret Christians, you know, it's like. And well, we talked about that earlier, right? That mm -hmm. There's a lot of Christians that walk around, but it's kind of like the, <laughs> oh, you're a Christian too? <laughs> oh, you're a Christian? And it, it's kind of like in the South, um, like, <clears throat> like the Jeep drivers, they they have like this like whole like, like finger up thing. Oh, yeah. The, like, the two it, fingers. It's like, it's like the nod at <laughs> yeah. each other. And like, it's like. Oh, the, you're a Jeep guy too? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. kind of like, oh. You're a Christian, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, no, I mean, <laughs> even for kids in school, Chris or um, Caleb was telling me the same thing about his school. It's like no one comes out and says, hey, man, are you a believer in Christ? Like that should be the first thing you should be asking oh, yeah. your friends. Yeah. Right. Are you a believer in Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. it, isn't, it shouldn't come up after knowing each other for months. Yeah. Oh, wait a second. You're a believer? Yeah. Oh, me too. Right. right. It should, your life should be marked or set apart. Yeah. And people go. That guy is different, mm -hmm. right? Or that young man is living his life differently from the rest of everyone else. Right. And um, and it doesn't mean that we're weird. <clears throat> it doesn't mean that we're, you know, that we, you know, wear funny clothes. It doesn't mean any of that <laughs> stuff. Yep. But right. the things that we're talking about and the things that are important to us are quite different than what the rest of the world is doing. It should. It right. should be. Oh, yeah. Right. But unfortunately, there's this, um, there's this blend that's occurred right mm -hmm. where we've blended as a culture a christian culture into the world and we can't tell who is oh, yeah. and who isn't yeah right so again you know if you're hanging out with people mm -hmm. if they don't know that you're a christian mm -hmm. that's a problem yep right because your life should be marked as set apart for right. christ um and and i think there's no question Dave, when, when you talk to people, they know exactly where you oh, stand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, know, you can, they, they want to fake it till they make it or whatever the deal is, but it's like, you know, they, you know, I've got some questions I ask mm -hmm. people when I first meet them, you know, if they, if I want, if I'm trying to d establish a relationship with sure. them, you know, that, you know, cause they aren't going to just come out and tell me that, mm -hmm. you know, and it's like, I, you know, I'm not going to waste days or hours or months or years trying to figure out if you're a Christian or not. So just get a couple questions. I ask them and, you know, it's pretty obvious then where, what we're going to, what our conversations are going to be like and how they're going to be. So, well, you know, someone told me it was strange the other day. I was telling them how Mr. Dave selects his construction jobs. Mm -hmm. I said, I remember the first time we asked Mr. Dave to do some work in our house in Minnesota. Right. And he says, oh, I'll, I'll go pray about that. And I'm thinking to myself, you mean you're gonna go pray about it? Like <laughs> we're gonna pay you. <laughs> like you're, we have money. It's, it's a construction <laughs> job. I mean, what, what, what? How much more difficult could it be that you have to go pray about it? Right. And he he later on explained to me that you know that he wants to hear from the Lord before before taking on a job, and I think it goes along the lines of being equally yoked. Number one, mm -hmm. or that he wants to hear from the Lord that there might be a good ministry opportunity here with the person that's asking me to that's engage in works. Yeah. And uh, sometimes that's worked out for you, but sometimes mm -hmm. you've been deceived. Oh, yeah. True. Yeah. Not not often, but yeah. it was. Well, there was that guy in Texas. Right? <laughs> yeah. There's a guy in Texas. And there's a guy was... in Texas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, not many, but uh, yeah. two, yeah. I think. Two but imagine how many more people would make wise decisions if they would just go seek the Lord before oh, yeah. stepping out or yeah. engaging in business transactions or, you know, business relationships or partnerships. <clears throat> I know you're against partnerships, by the way. Very um, much so. For, yeah, <laughs> for, for a multitude of reasons, but. Mainly because um, the Bible tells you not to do it. <laughs> so, so um, it's, you know, it's, these are the things that, that we lack. Mm -hmm. um, and, 
And um, we're studying through Proverbs like we were at Promise Principles this morning. Proverbs talks a lot about seeking wisdom oh, and sure. getting understanding yeah. and, and knowledge. But um, but what do you what do you tell guys that, you know, you just you're meeting with them, you see them, you know, pulling back from the faith or um, they're not engaging in faith that, you know, what mm-hmm. kind of exhortation do you give them? What, what do you do to to get them going? Dave. Well, you know, the the first thing I always do is ask him for permission to speak into him, mm-hmm. you know, because I'm not going to I'm not going to tell somebody something. You know, I've done that in the past and it usually is just not not fun. You know, I mean, they don't like me anymore and they, all their friends don't like me anymore. <laughs> and, you know, I'm this guy. And so I, I usually make that real clear. It's like. And you know that I'm going to be as yep. nice to you as I can, Michael, for as long as I can. And then I'm going to tell you the truth. Yep. And it's not going to be the same tone that I use when I'm just helping you. So and that's, you know, and that's how it is. But, you know, I I just want people to be truthful with me, you know, because I'm, I'm, you know, I they, if they aren't, I says, you know, usually what I'll say is you want me to tell you some of my stories, mm. you know, so you feel comfortable. Tell me whatever you're going to tell me, you know, and. Uh, so uh, I make sure they they know that it's kind of like the last podcast. I look, listened to it here a couple of weeks ago when I was traveling. And, and you say, yeah, you look at this old guy sitting here and you'd never, never in a million years think he's done. <laughs> and I mean, you haven't you don't know um, a hundredth of it. Well, I mean, some of the really bad stuff, you know, but, um, you know, so people look at me and they go, oh, this is. Just an old guy, you know, that's here and comes to the Bible study or whatever. But if they just, um, if I explain to them that, you know, hey, you know, we had a baby at 15, you know, I was a drug addict. I, you know, I used to rob liquor stores, not with a gun, but I'd break the window and steal the liquor, <laughs> you know, kind of things. And, and you know, I was in juvie for a little while and never wanted to go back there. And it's just, oh, okay, you know, yeah, okay, now we can talk, you yeah. know. And so and I just want them to be, you know, and whatever their issue is, um, if they're um, hesitant about talking about it, 99.9% of the times I can tell them a story that will kind of rock their socks. Mm. And they go, oh, you did that? And I go, yeah, once or twice or few times or <laughs> you know so it just puts them at ease you know right. that um you know it's it's always hard if you've never had a life with any issues mm-hmm. you know yeah, i grew up and i grew up in a christian home and you know i went to bible college and married my childhood sweetheart and you know, that happened to me once and my wife and i it blew our minds we were learning how to be marriage mentors. We're doing a marriage mentor, starting a new marriage mentor program at our church. And so they picked, I don't know, like 15 of us to be mentors. Uh And so um, my wife and I, and then another, some friends of ours that have been married, not quite as long as us, we've been married 52 years, but, and then there was another younger couple at the table when we were going through this training. And so you go through the training and all this stuff. And then, um, you're supposed to take uh, in the the program is you take a survey and you mark all the 135 boxes and then they analyze it. Mm-hmm. And here's the five areas that you have issues in, you know, top the worst ones to the lowest ones. And so we all did that the first day of training. And then the last day of training, they gave us back our surveys. And then we were supposed to pick somebody, you know, we, partnered with somebody at the table and we were supposed to go over their, their, their surveys. And Michelle and I are looking at the, we, we got the younger couple. We're looking at this survey and it's like, they don't disagree on anything. I mean, it's like all hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> this one here is like 99.2, you know, and uh, all ours are like still after years of counseling and stuff, it's like 40 and 60 and, you know, 55. And so um, they're looking at our, <laughs> we're sitting at the table and these two young kids are looking and we'd been married at that time, probably go 40, 50, 40, 
40 years probably, I would say. And they're looking at it and they're looking at us and they're looking at it and thinking, are you really going to be mentors with this? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, let's talk, let's talk about that, Dave. I, I am, I actually am preparing uh, to speak at a, at a couple of events in the coming weeks. And I, I was, as you were talking, I just brought up some notes for, for what I was going to be talking about, but it's in line with what you just said. So uh, we'll come right back. All right. We're back with Mr. Dave and Dave, uh, before we left off, I, Told you I was preparing uh, to speak at a couple of uh, of events here in the coming months, and uh, I was pulling up some notes because they they were aligned with the, what you were just talking about. And I had written um, the dangers of thinking we've arrived because we've been a, a Christian for X amount of years. Um, that leads to a lot of head knowledge, but then but no practice of the truth, right? And um, and I talk about being doers of the word and not hearers only. And uh, that means that we're exercising what we've learned. We need to be exercising, doing what the word of God tells us to do. And it doesn't mean that because we've obtained a ministry title, right, that we're actually practicing these oh, things. For sure. Right. And then I said this, would you take physical training advice from someone who was physically out of shape <laughs> or marriage advice from a, a counselor whose marriage was all jacked up? Oh, yeah. Or better yet, financial advice from uh, a licensed CPA <laughs> whose financials were a mess? Yeah. Of exactly. course not. Oh, yeah. Of course we wouldn't. No. Right? But that that goes in line with your, um, your walking in faith. Um, and you you admit your marriage isn't perfect, but yeah. you've been, you, you've, you know a thing or two because you've seen a thing or two <laughs> oh, in the yeah. marriage. Yeah, right? For sure. And so, uh, and so when you share these testimonial stories with guys, it opens the door for them to be safe, mm -hmm. right? Because a lot of guys, I mean, when I first meet some, I mean, I, I've told you this in the past, Jared, be careful what you're sharing with guys, mm -hmm. you know, until you build some trust and you establish some trust. And I think that's important for us in relationship in, in right. Christ as brothers yep. in Christ. Mm -hmm. We want to be wise. Um, we don't want to just spurt <clears throat> off at the mouth, mm -hmm. you know, all of our deep, dark secrets of our past yep. um, without establishing some trust and some uh, some accountability with the with the men that we're running with. Right. Right. And so uh, and so, Dave, that's that's something that I think when um, you and I met, you know, we built that trust fairly quickly, you know. And oh, yeah. Because my wife said, I found <laughs> you a dad and she was going crazy and. I had to be a good you know, dad. Tell them all my problems. It was it was either you're taking Mr. Dave on or I'm leaving. No, no I'm kidding. She didn't say that. But but it was uh, but it was I, I believe that God ordained that time of our meeting for and, sure. um, and for sure um, allows us now to to really um, do life together. We, we travel a lot together. Amen. And um and do ministry together. And so I'm excited uh, about what God's doing in this this part of your life. Amen. Right. And even like this guy, like Zach, right, Jared, because immature Mike can go, why is he staying with Zach? And that guy's <laughs> he's stealing my dad, <laughs> you know, but I'm like, man, praise the Lord. You know, that, yeah. that Dave is able to now pour into another man mm -hmm. and that man is going to be pouring into hundreds of other men. Right. And um, and that's just the legacy that, that Dave's leaving behind. It's mm -hmm. just a yeah. wonderful legacy. Yeah. And that's. You know, and, and that's just one one small example. You know, I wanted to, I just wanted to go back to that thing about praying Do about it. my jobs. Yep. So, um, and th this happens more often than than you think. So, I had a friend in church who's a leader in the church, actually works for the church in the central office division. Mm -hmm. And he called me one day. He says, "Hey, we're maybe thinking about selling our house, but we want to do some stuff in our basement." fix our basement, you know, it's, we've been, it's not done. And I can't even remember all that they want to do. So I went and looked at it and, uh, um, looked at it and looked at it and took pictures and did my normal thing, take it home and lay it out. And I prayed about it and, and, um, it laid there. And usually if, if something in my house lays in a place more than an hour that isn't supposed to be there, my wife packs it all up and puts it away. And, then I gotta go find it, and so and then I went and found it. That happens in our house too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And so anyway, so it got to be like two, three, four weeks, and I'd never I'd prayed over it a couple of times, and I just couldn't sit down, and I just I couldn't get myself to sit down, and because usually what I'll do is I'll do the bid, and then I'll leave it sit for a day or two, and then I'll pray about it, and then I'll go back and 
leave that there, but do the bit again. And then I'll pray about them and see what, how, what the difference is. And anyway, I just never got back to this thing. And finally I called and I felt guilty. Like, this is my good friend and he wants me to help him. And I'm not even sitting down. And, and finally I call him up and I says, hey, um, you know, um, I just don't think I can do your job. And he goes, oh, oh really? And I go, I don't know why, I, but I just, I just don't think God wants me to do it. I, I'm sorry. I just don't. And two weeks later, he calls me. He says, hey, man, I'm so glad we didn't start that stinking job because we didn't even have to put our house on the market. And the people walked in and loved the basement just like it was, was what sold out. So uh. If we'd have <laughs> tore that all apart, um, you know, we didn't have to list it. We didn't have, you know, and I'm, I'm going like, yeah, praise God. You know, I mean, it wasn't me, you know, it was him. Mm. So, but so yeah so back what was your what was the last question i forgot now what we were talking about i don't I have no idea <laughs> i was just i was engaged in what you were just talking so, about yeah oh with zach the zach you know yeah well, so yeah, that was a discussion so, yeah so about. so it was um we michelle and i had gone to um when we were out here working the first time yeah. um my wife michelle and her aunt came and picked me up here and then we drove to California to a Mario Murillo training session, uh, um, fire and power uh, training. Went to Fresno in the middle of COVID and never wore a mask, never did anything. You know, went with 2,000 people in an auditorium. And the first day we're there, we're standing in line to get in. And I could hear these people talking behind me. It was all about Colorado Springs and church and yada, yada, yada. And so I could have just stayed there and looked ahead and went in, got my seat and never knew who these people were. But I didn't. I They got done talking. I turned around. I said, so you're from Colorado Springs? And he goes, oh, yeah. And I says, well, I'm working in Castle Rock. And uh, we met, um, Zach and Melissa and I met and their pastor's wife and some people from their church. And we just hit it off. You know, and so that we'd look for each other kind of in the thing and didn't hang out a lot in those five days. But um, so I came back and um, we got back like on Wednesday or Thursday and I called Zach and I says, hey, what time's your church service? Because I like to go to church on Saturday nights. And he said and he told me that one of the campuses had a Saturday night service. So so I went down, went to church with them and and. This is when Eli was here with you, right? No, no. This was the very first okay. time I was here. And so then we went to church and um, uh, they asked me a question and I gave them an answer that kind of surprised them. And so they says, can we go for supper? You know, and so then we sat for like five and a half hours at supper and talked about all kinds of stuff. And we just connected and it just got to be where. I started going Saturday nights to church down there and come back, go Sunday with mm -hmm. the bones to church. And, and we just connected and talked and, you know, over the years and each time I'd come back, I'd make sure I saw Zach and Melissa and talked with them. And, and Michelle didn't, was never back. So she wasn't connecting with them so much, but, and then all of a sudden it's like, you know, Mar we knew Mario was coming to town and, um, Texan Zach and you know he's their their church is kind of leading the way and he says hey are you coming out and I go well, yeah we're planning on it he says well can you help me he says I'm running all the ushers and I just need some help and it's like yeah that worked good and he says if you want it you can stay with us you know he says because the hotel rooms are not many and they're real expensive and and we you know Michelle and I don't like you know, taking advantage of people sure. or anything. And, and they says, no, 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 that's fine. You know, we're going to be busy and you can help us. And it was the most incredible four days because I worked for Zach as a, whatever, an usher captain or whatever. And, and so we'd come home and then we'd talk the four of us about the pros and cons and what's going on and what we see from our point of view and what they see and, you know, and to help them grow and change. And I mean, it was just a, it was an incredible, incredible four days. And you know, we just grew so close, mm -hmm. you know, and then the opportunity to bring him up here and show him the promise and it's through the men's discipleship program and meet Michael. And I mean, 
you know, I'm believing someday he'll probably be here t- telling his testimony because he's got an unbelievable testimony. But, but that's just a trip we took, you know, and met some people. Just like this thing I'm going to on, on Thursday, I met some people in Tennessee for, you know, 10 minutes at a big meeting. And they call me up and say, hey, this thing's going on in South Carolina. Would you like to go? You know, and I'm going like, yeah. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's just like these connections are, you know, you think they're just, you know, I used to. I don't anymore. But They're not random. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, we could say that for when Song and I met you oh, yeah. guys at, uh, at that church in Minnesota. Yeah. Right. And we were only there for a few months. Yeah. But God ordained a meeting there yeah. um, with us and some other people. And, and it's uh, and we're very grateful that at that time it happened. Yeah. But if, if we wouldn't have stood out or stepped out in something we believed at that time, which was uncomfortable for us, you know, we would have never done that. You know, if we did just, OK, I'm I'm comfortable here. You know, I'm, I'm OK. It's not not that bad. You know, and it wasn't that it was bad. It was just like, we're just uneasy and we're just going to go do something different for a little while. So, hey, with all the traveling that you're doing, the people that you're talking to, and um, and I know that you're talking to a lot of guys that are, are going through a, a lot of struggle right now. What are some common struggles the guys are walking through right now, Dave, that you're, well, you're encountering? Yeah. You know, the marriages, you know, it's the, are it's under the biggest thing. Yeah. You know, even I mean, here. there's a there's a. There's an epidemic of mm. marriage and problems and divorces and in with with COVID. Christians, right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. With it's just you know, COVID played havoc with the family. You know, with people being locked up together and you know, s- s- most people thought it'd be great, but when all of a sudden it's months and months and months, it's not so great anymore. Mm. And you really have to know, learn to know each other, and get to know each other, and. Uh, um, so th- that's, that's a big one. Um, marriages and families and kids, you know, um, I, we just, we, we have a real passion for kids. You know, my, you know, my wife is, my grandkids come way above me. I'm sorry <laughs> to tell you, but it's like, I don't even have a chance. You know, I just tell them this three girls at this <laughs> revival the other day, we met them. Um, Zach and Melissa introduced them to us, and we were just talking to them. And there's four uh, a little boy and his twin sisters, and I'm talking to them, and they've had a terrible life, terrible, terrible life. And uh, their dad's not in the their dad's in the picture, but he shouldn't be in the picture, mm. kind of deal. And so she says, you know, they'll be kind of standoffish and stuff. And and I've never found a kid that's been standoffish to me. You know, I don't know. If because I'm just looking like grandpa or what, but you kneel when you meet a kid and you kneel down or you sit down so you're below their eye level, that you just automatically have their attention. And I learned that in New Orleans when I spent two and a half years in New Orleans because I was in in the eighth and ninth ward and dealing with the the locals and the kids would, you know, a lot of those kids had never seen a Caucasian, let alone a grandpa type Mm -hmm. Caucasian, you know, and they'd just be mesmerized. And I'd, I'd sit down in the middle of the street. I I, I don't know how many pictures I, I received from me sitting in the middle of an intersection with four five, six, seven kids, you know, running their fingers through my hair and sitting on my lap and we're talking and laughing. And it's just, it's just how it is. I'm, I'm with these two little girls and I says, you're so lucky, you know? And I says, but, um, I had, five girls in my house all the time. So I never won an argument. I've never won, you know, I've never got anything my way I've, for years. I never got anything, you know? And so now I can do what I want to do with my wife and my kids because it's not a five to one vote anymore. Yep. So, and so we were talking about that, but it's funny how that all comes along. So Nice. Good stuff. Yeah. So, Marriages under attack. Marriages obviously. under attack. Families, yep. children. Um, you know the the drug thing is totally out of control. Drugs. Um, yeah, I do a I do a Bible program at a forty five day treatment center every Wednesday night, and you know those are guys that um, all of them are addicts. Um, 
most of them. A lot of them been in prison yep. a number of times. Is this the one you and I had gone to? Yep. Yeah, yeah, same yep. one. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but it's takes, it goes back to where we started is, you know, those guys are there, they're gone. And it's a great, you know, Christian treatment center. And we come on Wednesday nights. There's another friend of ours that was in prison for a number of years that has an unbelievable story, had a life sentence, had it forgiven after 11 years. Wow. Um, and he comes on Saturday mornings and does stuff with these guys and, and they're gone. They're, you know, like, yeah, praise God. Hallelujah. You know, I'm going to be a minister. I'm going to, I'm going to help guys like me. And they go on when they go back out into society and there's in two, three, four or five weeks later, they're back again, mm. you know? And, uh, so it's, that's a real burden on us. Yeah. Do you ever talk to those guys and, and, and pick their brains a little bit? Oh yeah. All yeah. the time. So what, what's the issue? <clears throat> what do you well, find that, that, that they're doing? Obviously because they've been in Bible study. Cause I've been there, right? Yep. They, they've had a faith moment. Mm -hmm. They've given their heart to Christ. Yep. They go back out to the world mm -hmm. and if nothing changes, nothing changes. Is exactly. that what it is? Yeah, that's right. You know, it's, it's there. They've changed up here, but you know, and we tell them, you know, throw your phone away. Burn, burn the numbers. Mm. You can't, you can't go back to the same places, you know, back to move, go, you know, somebody someplace else that's in a good situation, not somebody that's in a bad situation <laughs> in another place, yeah. you know, but if somebody that's in a good situation, move there, go mm. there. You, I mean, this today's economy, you can find a job in a second. If you can't find a job in five minutes. There's something totally wrong with you. Yeah. You know, but you know, and then you get, it's like we were talking with Zach, you know, you got guys with felonies and things and the, the, the implications that a drug addict or somebody getting out of prison have, you know, and there's some of the greatest guys I know, you know, I mean, that uh, if you give them a chance, they're going to be real, you yeah. know, but if they got to go back into their neighborhood or their, you know, their surroundings and so many of them just don't have and that's another piece of that of that baggage that spiritual thing yeah. you know if you're they're going back with that those same enemies those curses those demons those spirits with them it's tough you know they're it's they're gonna get i mean i i know it's hard enough for me to, yeah. <laughs> to keep straight well you know it's interesting because i was talking to someone about this the other day and i wrote about this this guy adam brown um, in the book Fearless, you know, mm -hmm. he was a, a guy that had, um, you know, double digit arrest record mm -hmm. and uh, his his friend's dad was an admiral in the Navy <laughs> and uh, gets him into the Navy, not only into the Navy, but into to the SEAL training program. He makes it through SEAL training and uh, and is in qualification. He, I think he made it through uh, um, his SEAL qualification course and then basically uh, is is in, um, I think he might've been in jump school or maybe he hadn't finished the qualification course yet, but he was in jump school and, um, and had a relapse. Like he was heavily in the cocaine or, you know, <clears throat> some other yep. drugs and, um, and relapsed mm -hmm. during this time. Oh yeah. And, um, and you think, man, this guy was putting everything on the line, yeah. right? He's, he's made it mm -hmm. basically. And, um, you know, they were able to write about it because he had, he passed away eventually, you know, mm -hmm. in, uh, in Afghanistan. But you think, you know, with with that much at stake, he was still willing to go yeah. back. Yeah. And uh, and there was something that still was unresolved. Yeah. And it took a couple of guys to come around him and say, hey, man, if this happens again, you're out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. there was that hard line. Mm -hmm. And do you find that, you know, maybe people just aren't given that hard line? Dave? Oh, yeah. For sure. You know, that it's uh, that they think they could still tiptoe in and mm -hmm. out of that lifestyle without any hard consequence. Yeah. You yeah. Know? It's it's definitely that, you know, I mean, it's I see it all the time where people are out and. And I'm I'm pretty hardcore on it because I was hardcore drug addict as a hardcore alcoholic mm -hmm. as a working functional alcoholic and drug addict, you know, had good jobs, had good stuff. But um what I did to my family and my, my life in that time was terrible. Mm. And so, but, you know, you think, you know, one, one drink, if, if, if on my 12th birthday, when I took my first real drink, I went and got drunk on my 12th birthday, 
And from that point on, for 17 years, I was an alcoholic and mm. a drug addict. And, uh, you know, I didn't talk to my dad, who was my best friend. I mean, it, it just, everything changed with a half pint of Seagram 7, mm. you know. And it's like, if, if I'd known that or had any clue of that, I'd have never done that. Mm. You know, I mean, everything I was, had ever I tried to achieve in my life was gone. Yeah. You know, and I tell that to people, I go, you know what? And, and I don't, you know, I, I've never since, since, uh, December 7th, 1978, I've never had another desire to take a drink. I, I shouldn't say I had a desire one time. Um, we were laying the blocks for the basement of my log home. It was in like April, it was 90 degrees. We're in the hole. We're laying 12 inch blocks. I got two guys laying blocks and I'm tending for them. And we get done that day and I'm going and I had five or six other guys just helping out. And I'd always send them to town to get a case of beer, you know, for the guys, you know, and one day. Um, that was the priority. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's like, <laughs> 90 I don't degrees. have to pay them so much if yeah. I give them a case <laughs> of beer. <laughs> you know, I, you know, I'll pay you, you know, back then probably five bucks an hour yeah. and I'll get a case of beer every day. Yeah. And so they came back with that case of beer that day, all iced down, you know, and the guy at the liquor store knew they'd be coming, you know? And so he had it all iced down and, you know, and it came and it's all so, you know, the water's dripping off the bottles and they're drinking and, and I'm going, geez, a beer would taste so good right now. Yeah. You know, and we're all sitting up on the pile of the blocks in I opened one and they all looked at me when I did that. I mean, they just like, there was this Is glazed look <laughs> over their face. Like he ain't, he's, not, and yeah, no. And, and I put that bottle to just like tonight with, when I put that sparkling water, yeah. I put that bottle to my lips and God closed my throat so tight. I thought I was going to die. And that whole bottle just run out and up into my nose and out my eye sockets <laughs> <laughs> that was the last time I ever tried to drink a beer. Jeez. It was like, it was crazy. Huh. Know? But that's my thing is I tell people, you know, that whether addicts or even just, just friends of mine, I says, you having a drink someplace, you have no idea what kind of influence that's going to have mm. on the people around you because you might do it and you take some friends out or invite friends to your house and you would you like a glass of wine or you want a beer whatever and that triggers them i mean and something happens just the fact it triggers them is bad enough but there's i've seen too many bad bad things happen because of that mm. and that's that's me now that's my response i never ever want to think about that yeah. that i was you I was the one that stumble. triggered that yeah. to go. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. That's, uh, again, that's the wisdom. Yeah. Right, Jared? Thinking ahead of how how my decisions yeah, yeah. or my actions are going to affect yeah. those around me. And it's not a people-pleasing oh, no. issue. It's a just being wise. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Just uh, Just being aware of the witness and the light that you're being for the exactly. Lord. In uh, and where he has you exactly, and so again, if if more people would think that way before just doing, mm -hmm. then um, you know, it's like when James says, "Be swift to hear and slow to speak," yeah. right? Yeah. You know, be swift to think and slow to act. <laughs> yep. You know, in some cases, yep, um, that might be the best suggestion for um, for for when we're out wherever what, oh, yeah. with whatever we're doing. Yeah, exactly, right? exactly. You know, it's just. You know, he gave us two ears and one mouth, you know, mm -hmm. you better hear twice as much as you say and, and think that way. And, and it's in everything, you know, it's like, you know, years and years and years ago, even before I was saved, I, I, I never, and I deal with, um, housewives all the time. I'm a contractor. Mm -hmm. And so I'm in their houses alone, you know, sometimes with them, and, but, um, I'm always, I mean, if there's the slightest inkling of anything, I go home. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I don't care what it is. You know, I've had people come out in their 
swimming suits go into their pool and it's like, oh yeah, I got to leave early today. Sorry, I'm out of here. <laughs> you know, or, you know, can we meet for lunch? You know, and it's like, uh, um, yeah, I'll bring, I'll bring my wife or, you know, I'll find somebody to come with me or can your husband meet with us yeah, yeah. or, or, you know, you're someplace when I was in the corporate world and stuff and you're, you got to go someplace and your, your teammates, a, a, a woman, you know, which I know what a woman is. I know the definition of a woman. So <laughs> if it's a woman, a real woman, yeah. I'm not getting in a car with her and she's not getting in my car. You know, you drive, I drive, yeah. I'll Uber, you drive, whatever. You know, it's not going to happen. Just, it's never going to happen because it's, it's just not that I'm, I'm going to do that, but I don't want anybody to ever think that. They saw me. Yeah, I saw something. Dave in the car with uh, yeah, yeah. with so or, and so. so out to lunch with this good looking young chick. You know, I mean, I I just don't. I'm not gonna. Whether I'm even, you know, and I travel by myself sometimes, and I definitely don't do it there. Mm. You know, and most if I'm traveling by myself, usually I I pull the plug of the TV set and I take the remote down to the front desk, <laughs> and they go, "What's this for?" I go, I don't, you can put it back in room 203 when I'm gone, but I, I don't need it here. You know? Yeah. Wow. Jared does that kind of stuff, right? When you travel, well, just yeah. kind of yeah. putting some, uh, put some good boundaries up around. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, I used to always pull out like the Gideon Bible and then I'd, <laughs> I would open it up and then I'd put the remote <laughs> in inside the of it. So <laughs> if I had all thought about flipping on the TV, yep. uh, I would be like, Hmm, I had to touch the word. And, <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, I don't think I really want to yeah. turn the TV on anymore. <laughs> yeah. But that's the things I tell guys, you know, that are struggling. Mm. You know, you have to be so aware of everything. Yep. You know, it's not, it's the simplest. You, you never just, you, you never come out and fall off the wagon. Just like I get up in the morning and go, hey, I think I'm just going to go get yeah. drunk or stand yeah. or whatever the situation is. It's like. Something happened that starts, something yeah. happened that and or something there was an issue with your girlfriend, your your wife, your mom, your dad. And instead of just say picking up the phone and saying, Hey Dave, can we have coffee? And can we, you know, I mean that's so simple, so easy. And all everybody knows that when you meet me, my phone's twenty four seven. You can call whenever you want to call. Yep. Um, and we'll do whatever we gotta do. And well, if we're if we're in a spiritual war. Right. Mm -hmm. Then not having a battle plan in yeah. place. Yes. Right. Yeah. Is, is, oh, yeah. is not a wise thing. Nope. Right. If we think we're just going to go wing it. Yep. Oh, yeah. Right. Especially when we're traveling. So, uh, yep. man, this uh, this hour has gone by quick, Jared. Yes, it has. <laughs> Very quick. So uh, we're going to come back with final thoughts with uh, with Mr. Dave and uh, just excited uh, to have him back on and to hear, you know, what God's doing in his life. And Amen some of the safeguards that he puts up in his life. And I think it's, it's good wisdom for us to hear in this day and age, knowing that the enemy is, uh, is attacking marriages oh. and Bull families um, yep. like, uh, like there's no end. I mean, we, Jared and I hear it all the time. You'll hear the Jiu Jitsu Academy where we've actually got a friend of ours <clears throat> whose wife just literally got up and left and mm -hmm. for no, for no good reason. Yeah. Um, and, uh, no explanation. Um, she thought it would be a good idea just to get up and, move out and leave him with, uh, with their kids, mm -hmm. which baffles my mind. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but Hey, it, I, you know, I think we, we can't underestimate the enemy is at work. So no. we'll be right back. All right. We're back with Mr. Dave for final thoughts, <laughs> Mr. Dave, pull it out of the cellar, <laughs> the good stuff, yeah. the, the bottom of it's the barrel all, it's all good stuff. of, uh, of wisdom yeah. for a final thought for guys that are listening in that, um, that, you know, want to glean from someone who's been walking with the Lord as long as you have. How what, you just celebrated? How many years with Miss Michelle? Uh, Fifty-two, 52 years, years of marriage. Years. Yeah, wow. In July thirteenth, nineteen eighty, I got saved in Denver, Colorado. Isn't that so, amazing? Nineteen forty-two years ago, yesterday. Who was it? Was Reagan the president in eighty? Uh, I can't even was remember. Was Carter just coming out? Or yeah, that had to be. Oh, yeah. had to Carter be came out in late seventy. Yeah, yeah, Reagan. Had to be Reagan. Bush was eighty-eight. So yeah, yeah. Yep. eighty. Yep. Nineteen eighty. So, Nineteen eighty. Dang. Yeah. Most of you guys ever weren't even alive. I was eight so. years old. <laughs> <laughs> if that makes you feel young. Yeah, yeah. I'm as young as I've never changed. All 12, right. Final thoughts. 12 Mr. is 12. So, yeah. So, Drop it, it. <laughs> you know, it's just, uh, it, it's, it's a warning is what it is mm. because there's so much going on right now and there's so many ways to get 
lost and confused and stuff. And if if you don't dig in and find a group of guys, um, not just one guy in particular, but a couple of guys, because um, I've seen it happen too often. I find a guy that that somebody counts on a hundred percent, and that guy goes off the rails. Mm. And then the other guy is like, okay, my guy lost it. So now I don't have a chance, you know? So you need some guys, you need a group of guys that, um, and that's why the promise principles that we do are so critical in my eyes, because that group gets so tight and there's eight, nine, 10 guys that most everybody is very comfortable calling any one of those guys. Mm you know, and, uh, and, and in fact, some of the smallest little, what you could consider stupid little things yeah, is what you really got to call about, you know, just like that. You know, I got this meeting and, um, I need to travel with this female work partner, you know, what am I going to do? You know, well, here's a whole list of things you're going to do, you know, best thing to do is take a different flight than she does, mm. you know, go at a different time, yeah. you know, um, you know, and, but things like that. But those little tiny things are what start the big things to happen. Yeah. And if you got a question in your mind about anything, you need somebody to call, you know, whatever it is, whether it's a spiritual question or it's about your kids or about your wife, about your boss, about whatever. If you don't have somebody you can talk to, you know, the enemy is going to distort your mind so quickly and put you in a compromised situation so fast mm. that um, it's just it 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 will blow your mind. And everybody says it. They get to the point of leaving, divorce, whatever. I'm deep into pornography. I've got you know I'm having an affair, or whatever. And it's like, how did I get here? Well, it was about. A hundred stupid decisions is how got you here. Mm. You know, it wasn't one day you just woke up and said, I'm, I think I'm going to have an affair today. It yeah. wasn't. It was a fight with your wife. It was things with your kids. It said your boss. It's, it's all this stuff just building up. And it ends up to the point of, and then all of a sudden you have a coworker or a friend's wife or, uh, you know, somebody that's nice to you after all this bad stuff. And it's like, yeah you know yeah that's who i need to help me you know instead of michael bowen yeah you know or jared you know i can call jared he'll help me you know well there was that worship song what slow fade you remember that yeah, yeah, yeah. i remember that right and i and i say it right <clears throat> that it doesn't start with just one episode oh no right there's been compromise beforehand yeah um that leads up to the right. to the big fall right? and, and and the biggest thing is it's never compromise in the same area mm. it's like a little bit here and a little bit here a little bit over here a little bit here a little bit here and then it all comes together and all of a sudden one day you have this this big pile of cow manure that you're sitting on top of going this stinks man mm. you know literally uh, <laughs> I'm like, yeah i'm gonna go do something you know i'm gonna go get a drink i'm gonna go you know get some drugs that i used to do or i'm gonna go go to the strip club or I'm going, you know, whatever, yeah. to put something on the point, you know, especially today with computers, I'm going to put something on my computer and, or whatever it is, but it didn't, it didn't come from one straight thing. It yeah. came from all kinds of little directions that you just didn't take guidance in from somebody and ask, you know, why this and why that, and, you know, I mean, I'm always asking questions. Why this? Well, what are we doing this for? Yeah. What's, what's this all about? And why, 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 why? And, and um, I, I just want answers, yeah. you know, and, but I need that from different people, you know, four or five, six different guys. Sometimes I got to call seven, eight, nine to get not the answer I want, but to make sure everybody's giving me the right yep. information. Good. That's good. Good stuff, Jared. Any final thoughts from you? No final thoughts. I mean, I guess like I, I wanted an additional final thought from you, like kind of finishing off like what we originally talked about. Um, I know that we have some listeners that like follow like some of like the end times things and, mm -hmm. you know, 
um, they're, they're kind of on the boat that like we, there's a lot of signs pointing that we're getting closer, like with your experience with walking with the Lord and all the different ministries. I mean, you're going to revivals, you're like all traveling all over America. And so, I mean, you've seen the last few decades and, um, and like the attacks on men, um, would you say things have gotten worse recently or is it always just, or has it been more of just an, a slow escalation since then? Um, well, you know, I don't think things are a whole lot different than they were 2000 years ago. You know, we've had all this struggles as men, but you know, we had it back in Sodom and Gomorrah and, right. you know, I mean, nothing's changed. Um, in, in my eyes, the end time started the day after Jesus wrote, mm -hmm. you know, and so it's, you know, you're looking for a time, you know, and I'm, I'm just stupid enough to believe that what the Bible tells me that nobody knows the end times, you know, so I don't. Well, no one knows the day and right. the hours with, <laughs> with the, what the Bible tells us. But I guess I think what Jared, what you might be asking is in, in all the years that you've lived, have you seen it as bad as you've seen it now, as far as technology is concerned well, and as far as. Yeah. You know, it being easy uh, for. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, yeah, it is definitely easier today. But I mean, even when it was hard, we did it. You we found, found a way, way to do it. I yeah. mean, yeah. I mean, when you're 10 years old and looking at Playboys, you know, it wasn't easy to get that. You yeah. know, I mean, it's not like it is today, but it's way more accessible. Yes, for sure. And it's but it's also easy for people to monitor that stuff, mm -hmm. you know, where you couldn't monitor me sneaking into somebody's bedroom and stealing his playboy and going home. Yeah. Where if you, if you allow your kids to be on electronics unmonitored, you know, then I, um, I won't blame anybody. But you, you know, right. I mean, they, you should have those babies locked down and, you know, we, we recommend all our men, you know, put covenant eyes on their phones, on their computers. And, and we get, I mean, if you click on Walmart in the lingerie department, Jared, I'm going to get a ping. Jared's looking at something he shouldn't be looking at. You know, I mean, it, that's just how it is. Yeah, you know? right. And so if, if you, you know, technology is great, but also the monitoring of technology is just as great. And so if you're a parent um, or a spouse that has questions and you're not, you, you know, at least looking at something or you know my wife and i have had the same email since emails came out so when i get something she gets something yeah. you know i mean there's no i got one she got one and then i got i got my business one and i got maybe another one over here yeah you know, kind of deal it's just not or two phones or whatever it's like our computer sits open and if you walk into my house, if you open my computer, you can look at everything I got on there. If you pick up my phone on the desk and turn it on, everything in there is yours. I mean, it's like if you want all my, I don't store my credit card numbers in there, but I mean, yeah. everything I've ever looked at, you can sit and look at it. You know, I'm not, I'm, I don't hide it from anybody. If you want to take my phone and have it, take it. I don't care, you know, but I'm not going to be. I don't have anything locked down or hidden or, and it's, and we teach that in marriage, especially in marriage things. I mean, everything has to be open. Everybody, everybody has to have access to the accounts, to yep. the, you know, everything. And, and your kids that have phones or computers that you can't see things in and stuff. I mean, that's ridiculous. That's Dangerous. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good. Yeah. Awesome. That answer your final thought, Jared. That did. All right. <laughs> well, Mr. Dave, thank you for coming on. Yeah, thank you. Thank and you. Uh, we'll we'll talk to you again soon. Hopefully, have you back on in a, in a, in a few weeks, a few months, sure. or whenever you're back whenever. through the we'll be back the state. I know you will. <laughs> we love you, and uh, yes. thanks for coming on. Love yeah, thank you. Guys. Thank you for having me.